welcome to Why Are You Awake? Paul Farvar here, your host. This week we have comedian Jamie Schreimer. Please go check her out on Instagram and all of her socials right here. Also check me out. If you're listening to this podcast, go over to the YouTube page and watch it at youtube.com backslash Paul F. Comedy. Check out my website, Paul F. Comedy, for upcoming dates. Follow and subscribe to the YouTube channel and my Instagram as well. And also check out our sponsor. Hey gang, as some of you know, I used to be a practicing lawyer in Chicago. I no longer practice, but from time to time, I need a lawyer. And when I need a lawyer, I call my friend Scott Shapiro. Scott Shapiro has been practicing law for over 25 years in Chicago. He does it all, from workers' compensation to personal injury, employment issues, and even entertainment law and contract needs. If you need a lawyer, call my friend Scott. 312-648-8800. That's 312-648-8800. Or you can email him at scott at scottshapirolegal.com. Tell him I sent you. You're welcome. Let's do it. Let's get into it. (sighs) We're already into it. We're into it right now. So we just start talking right now. I don't know. I love that. So when did, because I know you used to do singles only. I'm sorry to talk about singles only, RIP. Never appeared on that show. Was married the entire time. You did and then that you show. called me when it was over. You're like, I can do it now. I was like, like I got oh. divorced. You're like, singles only is no more. And I was like, just like my marriage is no more. <laughs> um, but so, what what gave you the idea for this title? I love. How I'm asking you a question right sure. off the bat. That's fine. We we'll we'll we might I'm keep sorry. it in. We might take it out. Um, I'm a night owl. I've always been a night owl, and I always feel like that's. I like talking about comedy, and I like talking about things that we talk about like what you talked about today when you messaged me i'm like yeah. this is what i'm talking about so i wanted to 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 go over there i did i did singles only for seven years so it's like it's time yeah to so it's time for a new show yeah i didn't want to be the old guy being like kids don't get married <laughs> like, yeah you're like time for a new a new era yeah, time. yeah a yeah. lot of people weren't happy we lost a lot of subscribers but uh <laughs> hopefully we'll come back i mean we still talk about dating a little bit and there's hopefully there'll be a new group of people that want to hear uh, comedians and other night owls have to say yeah and i think that i mean yeah why are you up and like being a night owl i think a lot of it is the the yearning of loneliness sometimes so it kind of all comes back full circle it's kind of just the same podcast there's, with a new name really there's an overlap yeah there's definitely yeah. an overlap jamie yeah. well look at you look at you so insightful yeah any I, other questions no that's just my one that I was gonna ask. I fucking you jamie like, schreiner <laughs> comes in hijacks the show before we even start <laughs> like therapizes everyone in the room yeah. i'm like you're up because you're sad you're sad sad and you make it into yuck yuck funny joke haha jamie schreiner <laughs> Sorry. You, and then you just ruined it no no i didn't <laughs> Jamie Schreiner, I and I tried to figure out, I always try to start in how I met you, and I don't remember our first show, I'm sure it was at the Laugh Factory, yes. and at first, uh, as a former musician turned comedian, I never liked to combine the two, and I was always judgmental when people did, and then I saw you do it, and I was like, fuck, this is good, <laughs> Thank and you, so much. you are... I, we've said this on the podcast before. You're one of the hardest people to follow at the Laugh Factory uh, with the energy that you have. I figure out how to do it now because I have a couple of cheap lines that I do up top. We'll, we'll get into that. But Jamie Schreiner joins us today. Comedian so and musician Jamie Schreiner. That's so nice of you to say. No, thank you. When I first was doing it, people hated it so much mm-hmm. that I kind of like pulled back a bit. Yeah. But then when the pandemic happened, I just missed performing so much that I told myself like when I when I get back out, I'm going to take this time in the house to like figure out how I make this work. And I think that like my approach, I think why it works is that I don't tell anybody that I'm doing it. Yeah. It just starts happening, which I understand is like a little bit like guerrilla musical comedy approach. Mm -hmm. But I do think that for whatever reason you have to work a little harder when you walk on stage holding a a guitar or with a keyboard, you don't have any of that. Yes. It's like, I kind of intentionally like I try to, hide the speaker in the back if i'm running my own music or like laugh factory for example they'll play my cues so it's like i'll be in the middle of talking about something and then i'm just like dj hit it and people are like wait what's happening exactly. before then i've had a few i've had a few shows where it's like when i run the tracks myself um if the servers aren't aware of my of my act before the show 
they'll think somebody's phone is ringing. Like they'll start to panic. Like who, <laughs> what asshole left their phone oh, <laughs> during wow. the show? Yeah, yeah. And then they kind of are like, oh, this is a song. Yeah. So it's, it's part like of the show. Yeah, th- 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 that's something that I've I've really prided myself on in terms of like I want to be the musical comedian for people who hate musical comedy. Mm-hmm. Like I want to like change people's minds about it because I do think it's like the the issue with musical comedy. And I and it's funny that you said the judgmental thing. I think I'm I'm as somebody who does musical comedy, unfortunately, a little judgmental of it as well because I think that an issue is that there's like a special kind of hubris that you have to have to do musical comedy. And so I think of, unfortunately what that leads to a lot of the times is you get people who are not only bad at music, but they're also bad at comedy mm-hmm. trying to do, two. trying to combine both. Yeah. And it, it's, um, it's a phenomenon that I, I've, I've yet, it, like it, it baff, baffles science as to why that happens. Why it's like you, you would have the level of confidence to be bad at both things and be like, well, I'm just going to, and it, it makes it much harder for people who do have a passion for it to, to try to do it. Cause right. it's like, it, it puts, it, it, ha- it, it has such a negative connotation to it as a result. Well, I... So thank you for your compliment is mainly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, been told to do it for years. When I worked with musical comedians, like, just try it. I was the same way. Kristen Key is a, is a friend of mine. I opened for her. She's like, you should, you should just do it. And then I did try to do it once at the Laugh Factory, and I, there was so much... I got so much shit from the other comedians. And it wasn't even a real bit, but I brought my guitar on. And then uh, I just never did it again. Oh, Someone said, yeah, oh, yeah. that's a Dimitri Martin bit. And then later when I worked with Dimitri Martin, I go, hey, kind of crazy parallel thinking. But I did this thing where I had my guitar and I tune it the whole time. And then afterwards I do the the call back on the guitar. It's like, he was like, no, I've never done that. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, you're like, who? What? And then Jonah Jurgens was like, that's a Dimitri Martin. And then he's and then uh, and then he's like, well, maybe it was Nick Thune. And then sure as shit. I run into Nick Thune in a, in a club and I said, hey, did you ever really? He goes, no, that's a good bit. I'm like, fuck. And going to what you said, I've seen other people do try to do what you do with the with the tracks and it doesn't work. I don't know if they I don't know c- why it is. I, I think with musical comedy, I think that a lot of people think, oh, this is simple. I'll just write one chorus and a couple verses and I'm done. But like every single chorus has to heighten like the song the, yeah. the song because so it's like joke, you right. can't yeah you can't just sing the same thing over and over again and expect for people to like stay on board like it has to get funnier with each minute mm-hmm. of the song people will make like a four minute song and it'll be the same chorus every time every single time yeah. and they'll be like why is this not landing and it's like just honestly i would say cut it in half make the verses a little stronger and make the choruses different each time and you're gonna have a, a better reaction than if you do it because the thing is it's like in theory if you build your one million following then you can do whatever the fuck you want you can do your four minute songs and do it but it's like right now if you're on a showcase show and you're you only have 10 minutes anyway yeah you don't want to use half your time doing something that's just mid like just just make it make it stronger make it shorter and make it stronger it's the same way that like with the stand-up joke you start with like a lot of fluff and a lot of fat, but you, tr- you cut the fat and you get to the, like yeah, the words that are necessary. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think that the same, the same thing needs to happen with musical comedy. You also have catchy songs. Oh, so you. like, <laughs> thank you. You're already writing a hit and it's like, I mean, I just see people walking out of the laugh factory singing, you know, shut the fuck up that song. And yeah. is that what it's called? Yeah. That one is called, it's, it was, it's shut, shut the, the hell up, up, but it shut, ends up, right. it ends on shut the fuck yeah, up. You, so yes, it's, I mean, um, those are things that are all part of what makes it work. And your energy on stage is just undeniable. You're like, you have this ball of energy. And then it's, it's fun to see comedians who have to follow you that, uh, that don't know what's happening. <laughs> and they're like, I think I did a show recently. I'm like, oh, this guy's going to fucking eat it. And uh, <laughs> I just, I mean, it's hard. And, and for me, it's, I mean, Look, I've been doing comedy longer than you. I'm pretty... Laugh Factory is my home club. Yes, it is. But it is... You have to learn to adjust to everything. I've, I've had to follow people from SNL. I've yeah. had to follow people that have a billion followers. Yeah, you just don't know who's going to do it. You just don't know who's going to do it, but you learn how to do it. Even with, with how, I, how high energy my act is, and I feel like I can hold my own, like, there's been nights at Laugh Factory where, like, I, like, I had to go after... I think it was, like, one of one of the people who's like very heavily featured on either Joe Rogan or Kill Tony, I forget which one, Mm -hmm. but like not only was it like the audience was like, Oh, who the fuck is this? After like this, this literal famous person went on stage, but it's like all the comedians that were on the show and watching the show 
we're now at the bar yeah. kissing this person's ass, which is like, I, I mean, I understand. <laughs> like I, you know, no, oh, sure. no shade. I respect the grind, but it was like, I was the energy like, shifted. like the energy yeah. was like, yeah, and I I've feel like there. even some of the people in the audience left to go see this guy at the bar. So yeah. I was like, ah, oh, man. But I mean, I, you know, like I held my own with the people who were there, but you also have time without your music too. Yes. yes. So that's something people need to know as well. Yes. And, and you could do those shows where you're hosting. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I actually like, I'm doing a couple spots in New York. Like when I'm in New York city at the end of the month, they were like, Hey, we'd love to give you a spot. Is it okay if you just do stand up though? And I was like, that's fine. You know, anybody watching who books shows, <laughs> I want to make you aware. Like if you just ask me to not do the songs, like I have the time without the songs. I do like to do the songs because I think that they're fun. Well, you have to be more selfish. I think I told you that before. Yeah, you've told me that before many times. Because the thing is, I think Paul told me I was like at a venue and I had like brought my speaker, but the venue had a sound system and he was like, you need to like send your tracks in advance and tell them that they're doing it. And I was just like, but I don't want to make a fuss. But I do think like you told me that and I've, I've been more assertive about that and it's been helping a lot in terms of like, it just makes the quality better when yeah, it's through They have a system. Why would PA. you fucking lug a speaker <laughs> from Costco? Whatever the fuck. When you could just ask them. Yeah. Because. They're, but the sound guys that are at these places do music sometimes. Like they, they, when they bring in comedy, they're like, oh, we don't have to do anything. So they need something to do. Yeah. I know that that happened when we did uh, a theater show. It was uh, yes. in Schaumburg. And you're like, can I? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That's what they're fucking here like, for. Like this is a theater. Like you need you need to do through the PA, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like that's one of the reasons why. Like I've really loved in the past when I featured for Randy Feltface because oh, he yeah. typically has sound cues in his hour, sure. and so it's like he'll get there like hour before door and have me get there like the same time. And basically, it's like I just send him my sound cues, and he sends them a whole folder. And it's like that's this perfect. is the opener, this is mine. It does sometimes feel. A little, I think for me, it's just like the Midwestern gal in nice. me. A little, yeah, the Midwestern nice. I don't like, want to impose. Oh, I don't want to make up. Yeah, I don't want to make up. I don't want to impose. <laughs> F that. Get your tracks back. I no. always, yeah, you have to fucking, <laughs> you have to do it. Um, speaking of Midwestern and you brought up theater, I, I usually ask people when they come on here, like, so what were you like as a high school, in high school? I'm like, I don't think I have to ask you that. I think I know. You How know, long like, have you been in theater? Like, oh my gosh! Okay, my were you like three years old and you were doing plays? Um, so I started dance class when I was two. Okay, but um, my where'd first, you grow up? I grew up in Indiana, okay, in Valparaiso. I think basically, so it was like my mom, like it was me and my two sisters. I was in the middle, and then my brother's twelve years younger than me. But I think my mom, like, she didn't really get to do dance or like theater or any of that when she was young, and so I think that she very much like stage mommed us into like. You're all going to be in dance. Theater, though, plays. My first play I did was when I was eight years old. It was the world premiere of Gene Shepard's A Christmas Story, the play version, like the Ralphie, you'll shoot your eye out Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and I was extra number two. Where was this at? Valpo. This is in Valpo at the community theater called Chicago Street Theater. Um, also very hilariously. So a lot of people don't know this. Brennan Scannell, who's also a comedian based in LA mm -hmm. has uh, appeared on Netflix's bonding. I don't know if you know, it's like a, like a little mini series on Netflix. Brendan and I did community theater together in middle school and went to high school together. And so it's been really fun because like he does stand up now. I do stand up as well. And so it's like our paths have crossed a few times, like as adults. And it's just so funny. Cause yeah, we were doing like go dog go at Chicago street theater when you did the Christmas story, uh, were you, did you have a speaking role or you were just an extra? No, an extra. So that's like, basically like I would sit there in the classroom scenes and then like there was like a were scene you where you trying they, to like get everyone's attention. Like they're I, like, <laughs> please don't wear that hat. You're like trying to get, I think I just tried to be really expressive with my face so that I would get noticed. I was like, ah, ah, cause you had to react. Oh, and also this is okay. So I was actually in a Christmas story. I think like four times as a child. Cause like every single year you moved up from extra three to extra one. And then you yes. had a speaking role. Or well, what? it was supposed to be my last year I ever did it. I actually was in a regional paid production as a child actor. Mm. And I was supposed to play Esther Jane, which is the main role. That's Ralphie's crush. And actually this is like so toxic theater people drama. The week of tech week, the director goes to me. I think I'm 11 years old at the time. And says, hey, I actually think you'd be better suited as Helen, which is like one of the other like girl, still a speaking part, but like not the main part. He's like, would you mind switching parts? And I was like, I feel like that's like a lot of lines for me to learn 
the week of the show. That was all I said in response. Like I didn't say yes or no. I just said like I feel mm-hmm. overwhelmed by learning all those new lines and As all the new blocking. As an eleven-year-old, yeah. And he's like, "Well, if you're not willing to switch roles, then you're fired from the show." <laughs> and so I like had uh, like a full-blown like meltdown panic attack because i'm 11 years old getting fired from my first professional job just because i said hey i'm a little stressed about the workload of this yeah that's Um, why you don't like to tell people your this is why yeah actually i think and we're getting to the bottom of this today now who's doing the fucking therapy go ahead but then it's like my my dad i this this is honestly he did this to just you or were your family was your no they did it to just me and they were and there was like the extra was gonna take or like not the extra the understudy was gonna go on in my place as as helen and they were gonna move the girl who was helen into esther jane okay my dad called him as like please she didn't understand that it was like if she wasn't gonna do do it she was gonna get kicked out like can you please just give her back her part as as helen she'll do helen and they were like okay that's fine. And so, yeah, I had to go back the next day. Like, I had That's it traumatizing been fired. For a kid, yeah. yeah. And so, um, your name's Michael. I won't say your last name, but Michael, if you're watching, who directed A Christmas Story when I was a child, don't fire 11 year olds. <laughs> Like communicate a little yeah, more that's, clearly. That's, that's so crazy. Clearly, it's, it was he an older man. Yes, it was an older man. Yeah, I feel like it's like wild to fire an eleven-year-old yeah. because they don't want to switch parts three the days up. before the show. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like literally three days before the show opened. Wow. But yeah, no, it's funny because I think you're onto something as to why I don't like to make fuss. <laughs> Maybe you're that's afraid why. of the repercussions. <laughs> so you went to high school in Val- Valpo. Yes, I okay. went to Valparaiso High School, and you were a theater kid. Yes, I was. All um, the performance arts. Did you play instruments and shit like that too? I tried to do French horn in middle school because I had a crush on the on a boy who played French horn. Mm-hmm. I actually was so bad at it that I had to give up seventh grade year because everyone moved to the double fretted, fretted French horn and I stayed on the single fretted. And I'm a Leo, so I'm really bad at sticking to things I'm not immediately good at. Wait, did you just say what you're a leo and yes, that's like why astrology is why yes astrology is oh, why God. <laughs> you're like somebody shoot me in the head but no i um actually what i did is i took all of my core classes in summer school i was such a dork i did summer school every summer so that i could just be in art classes all day so i did like how big was your school like you're allowed to do this in yes. indiana yeah valparaiso high school is like Big. pretty good high school okay. but they they let me like i did health class i did my social studies i did in the summer speech in the summer so okay. that in in the school year i could take jewelry making and advanced placement art one and two and i could be in two choirs and i could be the president of drama club so yeah i was a real did you graduate piece early? of work i didn't graduate early no i just, just had like all these many. credits and extracurricular activities did you have friends <laughs> or were you kind of like a loner nerdy girl so both. Uh, so both I, fe- I feel like okay so you I found actually, your people I actually I found my people because I was friends with like the kind of like snobby mean nerdy girls like you know the, like okay this is like uh, this might just be like a subgenre in Velpo but like the girls who are like really really stuck up and like snobby about being smart mm-hmm. so those girls kicked me out of their lunch table and then I was actually adopted by the older stoner boys and became part of their friend group did you get smoke pot i did smoke pot okay. yes i actually smoked salvia too and i salvia salvia is literally is basically like bath salts you could buy at the gas station in indiana and you hallucinate for 15 minutes and it was so scary that i actually became straight edge after that experience until i was 29 years old <laughs> it was Hold so on. scary let's go back to the lunch table so you're at the lunch table the stuck up the stuck nerdy up smart girls, girls yeah ditch you they ditched me because I actually, I would started dating a drug dealer. And so they were like, you're a bad girl. You can't sit with us anymore. Drug dealer? Yes. I was. In, was he a high age I was, appropriate? I was 14 dating a 17 year old okay. drug dealer. So it's like, you know, Fine-ish. retrospective to Indiana. Yes. But like he had broken up with me. And so then I was all alone and I was eating lunch in the bathroom. And then one of the stoner boys, who was like, a, still my friend to this day, like a golden retriever of a man. He was like, hey. I keep seeing you go eat lunch in the bathroom and I don't like that shit. You can come sit with us. And so I sat with like all of these junior boys who are just like stoners, stoners who loved playing D and D and like nerdy nerdy stoners. stoners. Yeah. So like, so then the nerdy stoners are like, Hey, 
we're, we're going to a party at the Howard house this weekend. You want to come? And so I go to this party. The, the main mean girl who kicked me out of my lunch table was dating one of the siblings, one of the Howard siblings. The non D and D. He wasn't a stoner ner- nerd. He, he was, wa- he, uh, was, oh, was, he was, and was, but was also like punk rock, eclectic, okay. cool musician emo, like yeah. acoustic guitar emo yes so that was the genre of, of that person and my best friend now like my female best friend still to this day Devin, was there because like this is her house mm-hmm. and she was like i'm gonna go get a pack of cigarettes and i was like can i come with you and we became best friends over both hating this person <laughs> like we the both, punk, the, yeah the, the girl the, that did she the girl that mean was mean girl. to me yeah, yeah the mean girl we became best friends over hating her and we were just like chain smoking in her like shitty oldsmobile just like man fuck Aaron. and so <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. honestly i'm so grateful that i got kicked out of that friend group sure. because i'm still friends with like all the nerdy D D people this is like still my friend group to this day were you in all play. the plays then i take yes, it yes i was okay. in all the plays i actually like in eighth grade i made like everybody sign a petition so that they would let us do into the woods junior because they didn't normally do a play into the woods what's that into the woods is a musical by Stephen Sondheim and the junior version is just a shortened condensed version of the show the drama kids at your school the people that you're doing all these plays with were you socializing with them too or were you just hanging out with these stoner guys in high school now so in high school i i did socialize with the theater kids but i feel like with within the theater kids it was kind of like, okay, so there was like a circle that was like theater kids and there's a circle that was choir kids. And so for oh, me, I didn't know that there were sub stacks. My bad. Yes. Okay. And so the, the, for me, it was more so the middle of the circle. Like you had to be doing both choir and theater and you did for me to also. socialize with you. Yes. I did choir. I did See, show choir, which is the one where you do the dance routine and the co- oh yeah, so. God. Okay. So when I say <laughs> theater, I just lump everything together, but you got, you actually had theater, choir, show th- choir, and was there like other, uh, I did like visual arts. Like I did AP okay. art. So AV, I did yeah. like painting, drawing, and I had to do like every year we did, um, like if you were in advanced placement art, you had your own gallery. Like they took the whole upstairs of the gym and you would build like not one person. Little, everybody in the class had a gallery. Everybody in the class had their own pot. So it's okay. like you would walk through the upstairs of the gym and each student would have their own little like thing that they had made. That's not good, I don't think. I think that encourages people to think they're special when maybe they're not. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but I I'm will just say, playing devil's advocate. I know you have Mr. Rogers on your right shoulder yes. right now, but and no. everyone's special. But at the same time, maybe not. Did you make great art? I, I mean, no. outside of okay, no. see. I mean, we could we could, we could go so through. So like all these people that had their own pods in Valparaiso, probably there's like five of them still in Valparaiso. Like, you know, I, I once had a gallery in high school and yeah. they're, you know, and pumping to gas. Them, I hope that they like go on vacation outside of Indiana. What my experience was is I was like, I was kind of a, li- a little diva cunt in high school. Like I was very serious about like, like if you're in show choir and you're not hitting your mark and you're not, what, what's going on with her? And it's like, I, I regret that like as an a adult. Tale? Yeah, well, the thing is, I was never a tattletale, but definitely a teacher's pet. Definitely a, a teacher's pet. coach pet. I don't know what the yes, person's like, called. One of Okay, this is not funny, and I feel really sad about it, but it is a little funny in terms of... So, <laughs> there's a girl whose last name was SHR, and then different letters at the end. So, we were going to be sitting next to each other at graduation. Oh, S- okay. And so, she was Shrina. like... We should do like we should um, campaign to do a song together. Like I'll play piano, we'll get our friend Brendan to play guitar, and then you and these two other girls from choir can sing. And I was like, that sounds great. That sounds so fun. Let's do it. Brendan, the guy who ended up doing comedy in the Netflix Brendan, special. Yeah, we start rehearsing, and I and I come to realize cannot play the piano. Like pitched, oh, I'm gonna play piano. Cannot play the piano. Like does not have the skill level to play the song that we're trying to play. And we even were like, okay, well, what if you just play one hand or like, what if, you know, we were trying to like help with this. She's the one that wanted to play piano. She wanted to do this. We're in a pickle and we have to show our performance to the choir teacher before it gets green lit Mm -hmm. to happen at the commencement. And we all know this woman is not going to let this girl play piano. Like we, we knew 
that she was going to get even at cut. a Val Pro high school level. Yes, and so honestly, one of the, like you know how you think of like things that you did wrong when you were younger that keep you up at night all the time. We were talking why why am I up? Why I'm up is because when we played in front of my choir director. And she was just like, I'm really sorry, but I just don't think that you're ready to perform this. I think that the rest of the group can do it with just the acoustic guitar. Just and to the girl. Just to the who girl. Pitch the whole fucking thing. Who pitched the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And the choir director like basically said, like, you're not ready, you can't do it. And she's kind of looking around at like any of us to, to help just her. help her. And you did it. And we did not. But what were you supposed to say? Like, That's the thing is, is like I feel chance. in hindsight. You but and knew. the thing is, a lot of people tell me they're like, "You are the reason why this person like didn't go on to like play piano more and didn't." As she like, shouldn't. I've seen her. I've seen her Instagram though. She looks like she makes a lot of money and is much happier. So I, I don't. I, maybe I, I'm wrong. This but, is you did. You did a good thing. This is not anything to like keep you up. It Are you fucking me kidding me? I, I mean, maybe I should have, but my, in, there's a part of my brain that's like, should I have just stood was up with her? Was she mean about it? Was it? Was she like, you suck? No, but it's then like, what's the, what's the problem? That's but, how society works. Like, you but, can't coddle someone that doesn't have talent. Look, I was in a lot of <laughs> bands, and I was kicked out of a lot of bands because I sucked. But I was good at like organizing the band. I was like yeah. her. I was like, hey guys, we're gonna we're gonna make this yeah. band we're going to be a dave matthews cover band and then i became the manager because i was yeah, good, at good at organizing managing. yeah and i was gonna then say i went to law school see all those degrees up there i, I it yes. all works out everything works out when i just i would like to say if if she's out there and happens to watch this i felt bad just because it's like we have the last name that's one letter away mm -hmm. i had to scoot past her on the day, Every day. to go <laughs> to the stage to perform the song she'd been kicked out of yeah. that's why i think that's what keeps me up at night is it's like why didn't she say can i do something else what i learned from that moment like i can't control what she could have done or what the choir director could have done from that moment i do wish i would have been like hey can we show this to you again in a week or like can we did we have no. a little more but you're <laughs> no are you, you don't think it would have changed me? anything no absolutely not <laughs> yeah, this, is what's pro <laughs> this is the problem with your generation <laughs> you guys think that <laughs> if you're nice things will fuck that like you need to be you sometimes you just don't have it when someone has a bad show at a show that you're at do you say hey good set or no. do you just say i kind of just like Avoid eye contact. Yeah, avoid eye contact. Yeah. Leave them. What if on. they don't know? What if they don't know that they had a bad set? I and they look so, at I you. I kind of feel sorry for them because I feel like they just well, don't. I, I feel like even if I gave them feedback, they wouldn't take it. Like, here's my thing. I think I'm not that saying feedback. I'm just saying like, do you encourage bad behavior? And I think, and we've said that before on this podcast, to, no. where there's all these people that they go to these shows and they. They don't have good sets and their friends are like, that was fucking awesome. They're like, no, it wasn't. My counter question would be, you see somebody have a shitty, stinky set. Cause I have, we all have had a shitty, stinky set. How long are they in the doghouse before they get another chance to do that show again? Well, apparently in Chicago, they get a, they get a chance the next day. No one noticed it. There's I was no, say, I, I was gonna say, I have no, not always had that experience, but really? yeah, no, I feel like. I mean, I don't bomb be, a lot, but when I bomb, I feel like I, I just bomb with abandon. It used to be when I started at at the Laugh Factory, if if someone had a bad set one or two times, they get they wouldn't get booked for a while. But I've seen at clubs all over that I perform at where people have bombed that I've been on a show and uh, no, there's been no reparations they're just they're back they're back on this the no repercussions Reper reparations <laughs> repercussions yeah there's there's no repercussions yeah yeah, yeah. and uh it's kind of like you're encouraging bad behavior kind of like the situation with, with the piano thing no yeah. I, and i'm gonna say i won't feel bad about that one i will still feel bad about tattling on this one girl for not pulling her weight and then finding out that her parents had gotten divorced and so she was going through wow. it that one was that one i keep I, that one can keep me up at night but that's why i do tr I, I think that is why i try to like you know you have the duality of like the 11 year old that was kicked out of the production which is why i was such a perfectionist i think in high school and then you have me as an adult, I try to be a little bit more like, let's give people room to grow. Let's give people room to surprise us while not encouraging bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's just you got to. I mean, I, I love I love when people give me feedback or, or they say, hey, mm -hmm. like if I I have a friend, I have a comedian that I think is really funny and he bombed the show and he knew it. I knew he yeah. knew it. I go, hey, what what? 
how do you think that went? He's like, it went horrible. I'm like, well, there were parts that were good. What parts do you think were good? And then we sat and talked about it. I'm like, that's a funny bit. You're yeah. fucking, it's a Tuesday. No one gives a shit. As far as repercussions, he's going to be booked at that club again. It doesn't matter. Maybe it's my generation, but I do think it's got to be that balance a pussy of like. generation. Yeah. No, I'm an old man. <laughs> Proud of it. Blah, blah, blah. But Gen no, X, I, no. <laughs> no, I just, I think that it's like, I don't know if three strikes you're out is too much. Maybe just two strikes you're out. But it's like, I think like some people have an off night. It's like if you're consistently having a shitty night. But like sometimes you're just gonna you're just gonna have a stinker. Sometimes you're gonna have a stinker. Well, it, it depends if you're having a stinker because uh, you're trying new shit, or you're you're the crowd. Sometimes it's the crowd that doesn't get what you're doing. Let's go back to high school. So were you a night owl back then? Were you staying up late, or were you kind of oh, like yes, yes? Um, how how why? It was because of the bath salts. I think it was like a combination of both. Because I okay, so I actually just got diagnosed with ADHD, but um, as an adult. As an adult, but they were like, "Oh well, did you ha- did you have good grades in school?" And I was like, "Yes." And they're like, "That's why you never got diagnosed." But it's like I, the tendency w- with people with ADHD, I'm learning, and I see that you know, like very evident in my high school. Why are you stuff, pointing to me? Is that I'm showing I'm showing my high school. <laughs> You're like as I see with you, <laughs> I'm I like, see- "Fuck you!" I'm not diagnosed. <laughs> but in yet. but in in high school, like if I had a paper due, and I knew about the paper for weeks and weeks and weeks, I would still not start it until the night before it was due and I would stay up till three or four in the morning working on it that's very much why I would stay up late is because I would put things off and then try to cram it all in to one evening so you're being productive well procrastinating productive yes and that's why you were up you weren't up because you couldn't sleep or anything weird like that I feel like that's more me as an adult in high school it was procrastination or productivity or partying like i i mean i you're hanging out with the stoner dnds they well, would if they won dnd they need to celebrate right yeah i mean celebrate. that's what you do well and it's like go, i mean yeah we had jamie we had the we had the stoner dnd friends we had the choir kids who were drinking you know vodka out of the water bottle that we stole from our parents we had um were you drinking in high school too oh yeah Okay. Yes, unfortunately, yes. And I, I when I had a seventeen year old boyfriend who mm-hmm. was a pot dealer, but then he like ended up having like a actual like serious drug problem. So that was like part I think that as well as Salvia is part of why like I just I didn't really salvia do drugs. Is the bath salts. That's a bath well it's like it's kind of it's it's hard. It's like it's similar to bath salts. You could literally buy it at the gas station. You would just put it in the bowl like you put weed and you would sorry, I'm not trying to tell you how to do this at home, but you would you would smoke it and then you would just trip balls for fifteen it's minutes. It's like whippets. Yes. But it's you like trip. but yeah, it's whippets but you trip. Exactly. And we did that with glade. You could take Glade, put a towel on it, and suck like, it up. And yeah. One is seconds. like, it was so scary. Like, I, all my friends were suddenly in jumpsuits, and they were telling me if I didn't join their organization, they were going to kill me. Jumpsuits? So they had, like, like these white jumpsuits that were covered in orange dots, and everything was all white. Oh, this is the, the hallucination. Trip. Yes, and they were God. showing me how... Like, where do we get they to were this? Sh- they, were, they were showing me how, like, everything in my life was just a movie set and a lie. And then I remember I was, like, sitting in the bathroom, and I was like, but the bathroom is normal. And then my brain was like, Jamie, you just did drugs. And I was like, oh, and I remember after that, I thought that was kind of cool. But then I was like, I'm never doing, no more bath <laughs> I'm never doing this again. Yeah, that goes too scary. What about in college? Did, what did you do there? Where'd you go to college? I went to Millican University um, for musical theater. And so, yes, I would stay up because I procrastinated homework. But now you're just doing musical theater. and. Yeah, but I, but well, the thing is, I was also in the, so I, I was a, a James Milliken scholar, which means I was in the honors program on a scholarship. Of course you were. And then I also was in the music, like doing musical theater major. So I simultaneously had like, I'd be writing like an in-depth play analysis, memorizing lines. And then I would have to do like a four page dissertation on this particular species of spiders because I took like a class called biology of spiders. Like I, I mean, yeah, I was a, I was a little nerd. I've always been a little nerd. So what are you doing? You were obviously up late studying. What were you doing? I did do some partying because I I was, um, I was into going out. I feel like there was like partying was drinking and drinking, smoking pot, smoking pot, sometimes smoking cigarettes, um, 
no bath salts anymore. No bath salts. No, no, no. I, I feel like like the, the salvia, which is like, that was just one time when I was 16. When you were in college, were you hanging out with other, it was all theater people, I assume? So or theater people. And then I also, I was in a sorority. Oh, so I hung of out. normals? Like non- choir so, yeah i was like well a actually, regular <laughs> sorority so basically my 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 two college roommates who are actually who i hung out with in minneapolis this weekend one of them was studying um music education okay. so she's a music teacher creative now. adjacent and then my other friend who was my roommate was studying marketing i would have been that same uptight little bitch forever <laughs> yeah if i hadn't made friends with other interests other uh, people outside the world yeah yes you said there were seven people in musical theater program, yes. Okay. There were seven musical theater majors. So you didn't socialize with them twenty four seven. You had a sorority. I had a sorority, and I would some. Well, the thing is, like, I I think freshman year I socialized them with a lot, but then it's like as you got to know them, you were like, oh, you suck, you suck. <clears throat> I like you. You, I'm not sure about. So it was kind of just like, yeah, it, it made it so that it became a lot more like. I will talk to you when we're in class because we have literally every class together for the next four right. years. The thing that really bonded me with the theater kids when I was in school is I did do a semester in London junior year. And so everybody who went on that study abroad, we got very, very close because we were living in London mm -hmm. at 20 to 21 years wow. old. So we were just, we were, I mean, we were just like little repskillians, Little American shitheads running around London. After college, what happens? Do you, where do you move? First went to grad school. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, I went to grad school. It was a year-long program in Scotland. And that was like, I mean, yeah, that was kind of just like, a, that was like basically like a year at summer Grad camp. school for what? What was your major? Musical theater writing. <laughs> Which is like, it's okay. like a lot of musical theater background to not do anything related to music. Well, you I mean, are. I write songs. I write songs. So it's like, yeah, I. Are you alone out there? I actually moved in with a Hungarian man <laughs> who we really didn't interact at all other than just like, kind of like, we just tried to avoid each other. Like it was a, a thing. Roommate. Like, it wasn't a, it wasn't a relationship. No, no, no. Okay. It was just like, we, we found each other on like the Scottish version of Craigslist and we both needed a roommate and he was like a freshman in undergrad and I was obviously like doing my master's mm -hmm. and so we really just like avoided each other as much as possible and i lived in one of the roughest neighborhoods in glasgow what did you do there were you uh, did you have friends in scotland or were you sucked into this world of you kinda, sadness yeah i was gonna say you kind of like really just had the people you were in your program with okay. and so like i was really just kind of like in this bubble did you know anyone with, there and the before you started okay no it was it's really just like I was in this bubble with just the people in my program and then like maybe some of the other people at the school who were in the undergrad. It was just, it was, I mean, it was like very full on like doing stuff all day. And then when we did have time off, we drank our asses off because we were in Scotland. When you're in school as a grad school, were you able to be create like, I know you're being creative technically the whole time, but were you like writing your own stuff on your own during that time? And if so, when were you doing it? So it's funny because it's like, I actually did my first open mic while I was oh, in stand Scotland. Up. Okay. Yeah. Because I was just like, this sounds fun. Let's give it a try. My master's program was very much like the first stepping stone of me doing what I do now, because that was where I was getting more of the like creative writing. Mm -hmm. Like my undergrad was very much like you show up, you audition, you play the part that somebody else wrote. It was my master's program that made me go like, well, what if you're the one who writes writing the stuff? Writes yeah. The stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. And so, um, and it was also funny because it's like, I work with Randy Feltface now. That summer was the first time I ever saw him perform live because he was doing a show at the Fringe and I just happened to stumble into it. Going to the Fringe, I think, was a huge part of it because I saw so much comedy while I was there. Like most of the Fringe is like experimental plays and stand-up yeah. comedy, you know? Alternative so, comedy, yeah. Yeah. Where'd you go after Scotland? Moved back to Chicago. Trump was elected, <laughs> like literally the day at home. You, would you live in Chicago before that? You said move back to Chicago. Move back, because I had lived um, the summer before oh. I went to my master's with my sister in Chicago. Yeah, okay, so I actually am realizing I left out a major part of my lore. My Ooh. childhood house burned down the summer before I went to college. And so it was like every time that I wasn't at school, I was staying with my sister in Chicago. Okay. Where I was staying wow. with my best friend and her family in Indiana. And I think that's that's also part of what made me. Did you ever find out how it burned down? It was like bad knob and tube wiring because it was like an older house. It wasn't. So just that, like an electrical. It wasn't that girl from the piano? No. I, I mean, honestly. We don't be. know. We don't know. We never. Well, maybe there was the no world will never know. no investigation in Valparaiso. <laughs> they didn't check it for arson. No, I don't think that they checked over arson. I think that they basically ended up determining that it was uh, a just wire. like a wire error. Yeah, but mm -hmm. um, like it's funny because well, I was actually at Lollapalooza 
with my friends when it happened because it was the weekend before I was going to college. And so I just imagine the scene of my whole family standing in front of the house on fire and I'm not there. So yeah. I got like 67 texts at Lollapalooza because people thought I was like in the house. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you guys calm down. I'm just, at, <laughs> I'm just, just at the festival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but like, yeah. So, um, you go back to Chicago. Back to Chicago. You live with your sister. I live with my sister. Eventually that summer go, like, I have to get, I have to move in somewhere in Chicago. Like I have to be Chicago full time because I had started doing stand up and I was like also still auditioning for plays. And I was just like, I can't do what I'm trying to do and be commuting from Indiana. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to work. Um, so I like moved into my first apartment with, um, a couple of like theater artists. It was like, I think it was like, like 400, 500 bucks a month. And then that fall my friend from college and his best friend from high school moved to chicago and we all shared a three-bedroom in andersonville Mm -hmm. and that was kind of just like my first year then like ex-husband moved here we moved in together (laughs) how did you meet your ex-husband how did that i met him working at summer camp when i was in college so the summer before my senior year of college actually in minnesota okay we worked at a summer camp in minnesota randomly my two really close friends from college this is summer camp for theater I was the drama director at the summer camp. Oh, gosh. Okay. He was the riflery director at the summer camp. Riflery? Yes. Like teaching no, kids I know what to it shoot is. rifles. Yes. So um, he's not a creative person. He's not in the creative world, your ex. Oh, that's weird. That didn't work out. Um, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little funny, but it's like initially what I appreciated so much is I was like, oh, this is a brush of fresh, fresh air. This is like a different point of view. But ultimately what was was the demise is, was just like he he just was not cool with with how hard I wanted to pursue this. And right. I think that he was I think he was he was cool with the idea of it. But then when it became a real thing that was actively happening that's when he became much less cool with it. Cause it was like, I'm, I'm never home and I'm always yeah. doing shows and I'm out late at night. It's hard to have a relationship in this yes, world. It is definitely. Especially definitely you have different. tracks that, that you have to bring to shows. This makes it a little more complicated. Yeah. All the tracks so, and all the- so let's go back to when you, you come back to Chicago full time. Mm-hmm. What were you doing at night after your shows? What are you doing then? What are you doing now? Is it the same? Back then you were married, so it was a little different. You'd come yeah, home. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like, honestly, when I first started in Chicago, like, I was kind of a shithead. Like, I kind of started doing mics with the people who would really, really drink after. I would get, like, really, really drunk and, like, be sloppy, be messy. A year and a half into comedy that I realized, I was like, oh, I don't want to be intoxicated when i perform like i want to take this seriously because yeah. i'm i'm not gonna do my best work if i'm drunk if i'm drunk or if i'm high and i i mean i honestly am pretty bad at weed anyway so it was like i would just kind of do my set normal and then maybe i'd have a few drinks after the show um when things were really good in my marriage i was going straight home when things started to get worse in my marriage i was staying out drinking longer and longer yeah. and i kind of st- you know that was when i kind of started to get into more of the like upper stuff and i am actually very happy that like i've not touched the stuff since 2022 Mm -hmm. i had kind of a bad problem from like summer 2021 into like spring 2022 it was like a little bit of like a six month "Mm, like this is not looking good actually no it it went into 2023 because it was like it it was basically like a year long issue past yeah and I kind of just, I I do a joke about it in my, in my new hour, but it's like, I had a, like a come to Jesus moment where I like had done too much and I thought I was going to pass away. And I looked on Reddit for advice and they said to like run until your heart rate went down. And as I was running, I just was like kind of yelling out to God or the universe, whatever. I was just like, please I'm not dying for this. Like, I'm not, like, I don't want to die over this. Running would make it worse. Well, I'm well, still here, so. Right, I don't know why. Who, <laughs> where is Reddit is, like, is, is probably run by a bunch of, like, conservatives trying yeah, to kill people, off the, people the not, cokeheads or whatever drugs it is. Yeah. I mean, I feel like people should not take advice from Reddit, but I am glad that, like, yeah, basically, like, I, I made a deal with myself that, like, if I got through that, I wasn't going to do it again, and I haven't done it since. Okay. And I'm Because that's just kind of, like, how... I am in terms of like, once I, once I get my mind about something, I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Cause it's like, when I get to that point of drinking that much, I have the instinct to do that thing that I'm not doing anymore. Mm-hmm. So I've been a lot more like 
I'm going to have two drinks and go get some chicken tender. Right. <laughs> like that's kind good of good decisions. Yes. And are you creative at night though ever after shows? Are you ever like doing work? Yes, you are? Oh, yes. wow. That's I feel interesting. Like, um, How do you do that? So do you listen to your sets, watch your sets and then you're like editing? What are you doing? I after listen shows? to my sets. Um, one of my big things is I love to make beats at night. Like I'll get an idea for a beat after do a show. Do you do all your own beats for your tracks? I do some of my own. I have some that I've gotten help with. Basically everything usually starts with me, but a lot of times I'll have a friend build it out. But my process is kind of like, you know, they say steal like an artist. I got this from Timbaland. So like Timbaland will kind of go and just do it all with his voice first. Like he'll beatbox mm -hmm. it. Like he'll be like, find the beat. Yeah. And then go be like, dun, 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 dun. and like put it all together. And then he'll like, yeah, he'll have the, the line that's like, He'll, he'll be doing it like with his voice and then he'll be like okay i can maybe do this with this synth and he'll like recreate the rhythm when you're making the beats you're thinking of them how is this going to work into yes, a song? with this yeah it. usually like i do write the lyrics first yeah and then i i build a beat around the lyrics and the lyrics are usually funny and you're myself. doing that at night yes that's when you write or, or do you write at night or as the sun's setting. When you're on the road after the shows, what are you doing? If it's just me by myself, I'm usually going back to where I'm staying, Uber eating some really, really delicious food, going over my set. That's if I'm alone. But when you're yes. on the road where you don't know anyone, do you go out with the people from the shows? I try not to okay. because I, the one time that I did it in Miami, I'm pretty confident I almost got trafficked. And so for that reason, like I just, I, I really, for my own personal sake, cause it's like, you don't think about it as like a woman yeah. traveling alone. Like, you know, it's not safe to go out with people you don't know. So I was like, I, I think you're too old to be trafficked. I think I would hope, 20 but and under. I mean, at the time though, I was still 27. Okay. So I was like right at the, right at the cutoff I, for no, trafficking. I said 20 and under. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Seven years older. Maybe that, that you were still in high school. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it was um, like, we need, we need. People have been asking for a musical theater type. I don't even, well, the thing is, it's like, <laughs> I still don't know, like, was I being trafficked? Was I being, but like something, something bad was going to happen. Yeah, you something, felt darkness. Because they, because they It's also started, Miami. I mean. Exactly. Which again, a lot of people say that to me and I'm like, okay, I guess I should have known better. All right. Well, we went way over time, Jamie. I'm sorry. I'm a long winded ass yeah, bitch. We'll so cut out a me. lot of this stuff, but we're keeping the stuff about that girl burning your house down. <laughs> We're going to fucking find her. <laughs> I um, mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> where can people find out more about your upcoming shows and your special that just came out too? Of course. So um, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at Jamie Shriner Sings. And that's J-A-M-I-E-S-H-R-I-N-E-R -E -E Sings. La, 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 la. Um, and Corn Baby is on my YouTube. I would love for you to watch it. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Paul. For doing the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bless you all. I don't know why I said that, but have a good time in your life and go to sleep and go to bed please <laughs>